Welcome back everyone. We're back to uh, the 59 project here again and uh, pounding away on uh, getting everything ready on the box here for shortening it. So uh, I'll show you what we got, what we're doing. I got all of the, uh, the dirt and mud out of the box rails, the stake pockets. I do have some rust repair to do on both of them. They're rusted through here. They were packed right full of uh, of dirt, and both of them had a wire brush stuffed in them for some reason. So I got the wheel tubs, all the dents knocked out of them. I don't want them perfect because everything's going to stay pretty much patina on it. So I uh, still have to do a little cleanup on this box side. Uh, straighten out the front of the box. I'm afraid my tailgate is beyond repair. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do there. I really like the center logo in it. Uh, it's the only one I've seen like that around. I'm hoping I can find another tailgate, even if it's a Chevy one, and weld the GMC panel into the center of it. So uh, right now, what I've been working on is the uh, rear lower part of the box below the tailgate. I got everything cleaned up, uh, wire brushed off the loose rust, and I just finished spraying it with a uh, rust converter. So it's ready to, ready to go. Just stand it up here. Little rust converter on the fingers never hurt nothing. So on the back of this, for some reason, they'd cut a notch and bent it out, and they put a tail or a license plate light in it for some strange reason, but... I got that uh, bent back in place and patched up and welded. So, so this piece is ready to go back together. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is pull the front of the bed over and uh, see if I can straighten it out. Uh, the top rail is bent about half an inch and then the center is pushed forward. So I'm going to see if I can press that back down. I'll uh, bring you back here. Okay guys, I got you kind of in a weird spot down here. But where we are is uh, underneath my hoist. We've got the tailgate or the, uh, the front of the box sitting across there. And you can see that it's got probably half to three quarters of an inch of uh, bow in it. So I've got it set up with a couple of two by fours under each end. I'm gently gonna let the hoist down on it. And hopefully it's gonna push that bend out of it without kinking it. If a guy used a hammer, it would be, uh, you'd end up with a bunch of dents, so. Doesn't look like it stayed, so I'm just going to, a little extra piece in the center here. to the hoist on it. Well, it's quite a bit better, but I think we got to go a little more. So I'll bring you back once I get this down to where it's supposed to be here. Got to find some more block. Okay guys, I think you, I got you in a good position here. You can see it's almost dead straight now. It took uh, a couple tries. I overdid it the first time. I think that's straight enough. The only issue I have now is because uh, this was bent, the center of it has been kind of dished. So I'm going to shim this up and I'm going to try and gently beat the center part back and see if I can get it straight. The bottom edge stayed straight because it was bolted to the, uh, the first bed support on the, uh, on the box. So, okay, I'll continue trying to straighten this one out. Okay, guys, so using what I did here was the bow in this was this way from everything being pushed forward. I clamped a 2x4 on the underside at the bottom here. 
and then by positioning this 2x4 and using my BFH here, I smoked the hell out of it and uh, I've got it pretty much dead straight. So I've got a couple of small dents. Well, I'm gonna, not going to worry about the small ones. Uh, some of the bigger ones, I'm going to pound them out a little bit just to smooth it out. And uh, I think it'll be good enough for a patina truck. So I'm going to just do a little bit of planishing here and uh, a little rust cleanup, a couple sprays with uh, rust converter where the metal contacts and we should be good to go. Okay, everyone, we're back again. We're still trying to figure out, uh, well, actually, I think I got it figured out how I'm going to shorten this box. But I found online, uh, there's a GM site that has uh, all of the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, all of the uh, specifications for the different uh, length of boxes and styles for uh, the 59 Chevy Apache and GMC. So the... Uh, long box is 102, let me just put my glasses on, 102.31 inches long from the front to the outside of the tailgate. The short box is 82.44. It's roughly 19 and 3 quarter inch difference. And doing the calculations based on their center line to back measurement here, uh, to get a proper short box with the axle centered in the box, which is not what I want, you have to take nine and a quarter out of the front and ten and three quarters out of the back. Now, because I'm lengthening the cab by five, five and a half inches, I think if I go full short box, it's going to look kind of strange because right now, uh, from the front of the bumper to the back of the cab is 105 inches, I believe. Let me check the measurements. Uh, sorry, it's 108.11, and the box is only 102. So you have more in front than you do behind. So if I lengthen the cab and have that, it's going to look like a just a dinky little box on the back. So what I'm planning on doing is. Uh, Instead of taking nine and a quarter out of the front, I'm going to take four and I'm going to take ten and a half out of the back. So it's going to be kind of a mid-length box instead of the full-length box. But the other thing that I really want to do is get the axle back a little bit further, lengthen the wheelbase, which I think will look a lot better. So I've got it all laid out here, ready to start cutting. I'll just show you. So I've got four inches marked. Hopefully you can see the lines, they come up. I went one inch above the, uh, the missile on the side, which takes you up into the single layer box. Come along, I've got uh, the center line. This is the center line of the axle marked. I went down, then I've got the 10 and a half inch that has to come out of the back. Again. And what I did was I put a piece of one inch masking tape full length, which is where I'll cut this. It'll make it easy to weld back together. And then up top here, this is where I'm gonna take the, uh, uh, the four plus 10 and a half, 14 and a half inches will come out of the center here. So these will come back together. And this should all just slide in like a puzzle. I'm gonna make sure before I start cutting, so what I'll end up doing is I'll make these cuts, all of the cuts, and then I'm going to have to flip this over to cut the inside. I'll just take you over to the other side here. As you can see, it's got the bottom eight inches of the box is double wall, which is kind of a cool idea. It allows you to hammer dents out at the top here and it keeps the uh, anything you put in the box chuck in doesn't dent the outside so so where my cut is going to be is going to be one inch above this so I'll end up cutting then I'll have to flip it over and continue my cuts up the side here to take the four inch 
and the ten and a quarter inch pieces out. Then I can pull it all back together and uh, line up all the body lines and start welding it back together. So next thing I've got to do is uh, start cutting, I guess. Just make sure my plan's going to work out right and uh, go from there. So once I start cutting this apart, I'll bring you back, show you what's happening. Gotta love the smell of old cut metal in the morning. Lord hates a coward, but I just jumped right in. So what I've got, I made the cuts up here on the first part, across the top, up here, down this side. I'm just gonna clamp these so that it keeps a little rigidity in. Then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna cut the structure out of the center. Hopefully it all comes apart the way it's supposed to without wrecking anything. Okay guys, I got it flipped over. Those clamps are a necessity, joining the two pieces. I guess what a guy could have done on, in hindsight is not complete this cut, maybe leave a quarter of an inch on each end just to hold that all together, kind of like I did right here. So what I've done is I've transferred my cut line to the inner structure on both sides. I'm gonna cut that loose and my wheel well opening should fall out of there and then I can cut the four inch and the ten and a half inch pieces out. Then we can see how this is all gonna fit back together. Okay, we now have one, two, three, four pieces of, of bed. Uh, this piece came right out, no problem. Next will be our wheel well, which is now intact. We won't have any issues welding that back together. And now we have the front and rear half of the box. So next we have to cut four inches out of the front, ten and a half out of the back, keeping all of this square so it all welds back together. So I guess uh, here we go. I imagine there's going to be lots of final sanding, uh, a little bit of grinding just to uh, make sure that everything uh, sits exactly where it's supposed to. I think it's going to be a real son of a bitch to, uh, to clamp back together as well. So, Okay guys, I'm going to cut those sections out and we'll see how this looks. Okay guys, we got a short box. Yeah, right. Now I got a whole lot of cleaning up, fitting and welding to do. Uh, this will probably take quite a while. But uh, I'll show you all the steps as I'm going along. Uh, so far it looks like all my measurements were right. And everything should work out pretty nice. Okay. We will carry on here and I'll bring you back as we make some progress. Okay guys, we're just getting everything cleaned up and trimmed up here to go back together. And one of the things that I've noticed is this seam where they join the inner, outer, and upper part of the uh, box side. So this is the lower piece here. The upper piece is all one piece and it goes up and forms the top edge here. Well, they put very few tack welds between this panel and this panel. And when you cut it, it spreads apart uh, right on the ends and it did it in all four locations here Here there and on the other end So what I did was I just clamped them with a pair of ice grips and put a tack weld on them and then ground it down So there's no interference What that did was it changed when this dropped down it put all of this out of alignment For lining up with the other piece that's been cut here, so Okay, so I've got everything tacked together. It took probably about two hours of a uh, little bit of grinding here and there to get everything to fit. All I've done is tack weld the inner structure, the outer structure. I still have to finish off the bottoms, front and rear, 
have to do a little shaping because of the uh, different curvatures between the back and where I took that ten and a half inches out. I'll just put you in the tripod here quick and I'll flip this over and I'll show you the other side and the process I used for doing this. Okay, got you up here now, so, okay. So in order to, to get all of this to fit properly, uh, you're gonna have to use some uh, panel clamps. I used these along the front and the rear. And where you start putting this back together when you, uh, once you get everything cleaned up and, and fit properly is uh, tack the, the center piece, your, your single cut here in a few places to hold everything square. Make sure that your uh, top of your box is flat and it's not curved up or something in the center. Once I had this done, I started out right here on the very top corner of the rocket and I put a tack there. Then I lined up this edge and I tacked here. I did the same on both ends. And then from there, I slowly worked the steel up so I kept everything nice and flush. Started down this side so that all of my three contour lines lined up perfectly. Then I worked my way down on the front side here. I have a little bit of dolly work to do here because there was a slight taper in the front. Then I went to the rear. I did the same thing. I worked this till it was flat. Got the point lined up. Went down, lined up the bottom edge and then I worked my way down. Then I took this section here and I got it all leveled out and tacked in. Then I flipped it over and I did the inside on it. So now I have a whole whack of welding to do. It's going to be a slow process. I have to really take my time so I don't put any warp in this panel. Uh, I'm thinking it's probably going to be two or three hours of welding and then some grinding to get it done here. So anyhow guys, I'm going to call that one a video and uh, that's the steps it took to, uh, to get this box shortened, one side of it. We get to the other side, uh, we'll carry on. And uh, if you want a little more detail on assembly, leave me uh, a comment and uh, I can go into it a little bit more in depth. That's kind of why I'm leaving this video right here. And uh, we'll go from there. Thanks everyone.